yeah, cause he's intentional, never failing. I know that all things are working for my good, yeah, cause he's intentional, never failing. All things are working for my good, cause he's intentional. And he's never failing. All things are well for my good. He's intentional. He's never failing. All things are working. Hey, I know that all things are working for my good. Yes, they are. Yeah, I know that all things are working for my good. here on all fm 96.9 on the very inspiration hour as well as on kicc the city of refuge facebook live i trust and hope that your day is going great i can assure you by this day by the end of this program you will be blessed in jesus name i'm talking on the subject of understanding the voice of god well what does god speak understanding the voice of god I'm going to stop here and play a track titled Let It Be Known by Casey J. And I'll be back in a moment. Let's go. <laughs> Let it be known that our God saves, our God reigns. We lift you up, up. Let it be known that love.
FM 96.9 on the very inspiration hour as well as on KICC, the City of Refuge Facebook Live. The track you just heard was by KCJ titled Let It Be Known. Yes, let it be known indeed. The subject today is understanding the voice of God. Understanding the voice of God. You see, a voice is said to be a sound or sounds altered through the mouth, you know, through the mouth of living creatures, especially of human beings, in speaking, in shouting, etc. We know that in our world today, there are many voices in our world today. It's been that way throughout generation since the day of Adam. So it's not a new thing. You hear voices. Uh, the most precious, I believe, and most significant of all the voices, however, is the voice of God. The most important voice you must hear to succeed in anything you do, I believe, is the voice of God. You see, the voice of God, I dare say, is the most important thing, not just in the world, but also in life or living for that matter. The reason for this is that the voice of God is a conduit that carries the mind of God, that carries the word of God, as well as the will of God. So words are very powerful. God exposes, expresses his mind, his word, and his will through his voice. Absolutely important. You see, until you hear, until you hear his voice, you don't know what he's saying. You don't know his word. You don't know his will for your life. That's why it's so important to hear God's voice to hear God's word. His voice, his word, and his will are all one and the same thing. I say that again. His voice, his word, and his will are all one of the same thing. We say that a voice is a faculty or power of altering sounds through the mouth by the controlled expulsion of Air. So, through our voice uh, or throat modulation of our throat, we are able to create sounds, words, and have a voice. Mm. You know that the air in the media through which the voice or sound travels, without air there will be no sound. Without air there will be no sound, therefore there will be no voice. 
you know, in the same way, the Holy Spirit is not just the carrier of God's voice. He is the carrier of God's voice as well as the will of God. The Holy Spirit is God. In various parts of the scripture, the Holy Spirit has, is described as the wind, as the wind. In fact, spirit, of which you and I are, is, is described as wind. And wind is a conduit that carries sound. So through the wind, through the spirit, God reveals his mind, his will, and his words to us so we can understand him. How, why is it strange that as humans, creatures of God would find it difficult to understand or to believe that the creator would want to communicate with his creation? Why would we find that difficult to believe? So we'll be looking at the what, the where, and the why, and the how to hear God's voice. It's a question worth, what is the voice of God like? You know, have you, have you ever thought of it? What is the voice of God like? We all know that God speaks. Well, I'm saying all, some of us, of course, know that God speaks. But when he speaks, what is his voice like? I mean, what is the voice? Have you ever thought about that? What, as, you know, sometimes we don't think about these things, but they are very important. What is the voice of God like when he speaks? When he speaks, does he speak in the same way all of the time, like you and I do? Is it limited uh, like we are to the modulation of the voice when he speaks? You know, we have the voice detector today. The voice detector devices that can detect your voice, even if you spoke in another language. You know, the voice, if you try and speak another language or speak in a different way, the, this machine will find you out. It's just been designed that way, very clever to find you out. The question is, will it do the same with the voice of God? Or will it be confused? I think it will be confused. Nonetheless. I think it's very important to hear, not just to hear, but to understand. And of course, to obey when God speaks. This is absolutely important. You see, humanity has fallen, has fallen far from how God intended us to live. We have fallen. The Bible says, you know, we're falling uh, sh uh, short. We have fallen from the glory. All I've seen us and has fallen short of the glory of God. That's the scripture I'm trying to remember. All have fallen and have uh, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So sin is a major uh, factor here. We are all almost torn deaf. We are all almost torn deaf when it comes to spirituality or hearing from God, our Maker. To make matters worse, if somebody were to, if somebody told you they had God this morning, you'd probably recommend they saw a psychiatrist. You know, because I mean, the, but, but this, you see, the sad part of this is that the scary part of all this is that we are now so comfortable in this abnormality because it's abnormal for the creation not to hear from his creator. The truth is that God speaks even ever so frequently and in more ways than you can imagine. You see, your life is a reflection of your belief. However formal or informal those beliefs are, however true or however false they are, your life is a reflection of your belief. Your life will gravitate in the direction of, your, of the content of your subconscious mind. It makes no difference. If the content was right or wrong, your life, your whole life will gravitate towards and in the direction of the content of the subconscious mind. You see, if you believe a lie, ay, 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 ay. if you believe a lie, your life will turn out to be a lie. Just as well as if you believe the truth, your life will turn out good, just like you expected it. This is a powerful saying. If you believed a lie, Oh, yeah, yeah. Your life will turn out to be a lie. That's why you have to check what you believe. 
are the, the very core of the things that you believe. You know, sometimes we are too busy. We are too busy working, enjoying ourselves, and we fail to address this issue. And then we don't see the kind of success that we, we want to see in areas of our life because these are the things that is holding us back. If you believe a lie in any area of your life, if you believe a lie, your life would turn out in that area to be a lie. Just as well as if you believe the truth, your life would turn out good. So it's worth checking what you believe or defining, qualifying what you believe. You see, Jesus before, or just before Jesus went to the cross, he prayed in John 12, 28, 29. He says, Father, glorify, <clears throat> excuse me, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Jesus here was praying and in his prayer, he said, glorify thy name, magnify thy name. Then there came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. That's what it said. The same voice that came from heaven. Now the next verse says in verse 29, the people, the people, the people therefore that stood by heard it and said that it thundered and others said an angel spoke to him. Oh, wow. What, 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 what was going on here? The Bible said the voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. That's what the voice said. But what did the people hear? The Bible says the people therefore that stood by heard it and said it thundered. Or that said an angel spoke to him. Having not understood what the content was anyway. So you see what was said. What the voice of God sp spoke was that. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. That is what was meant to be conveyed for people to understand. That's what Jesus himself understood. But the people that stood by heard it, but they had a different thing. Some people, all they heard was a thunder. God spoke and all they heard was a thunder. The other people said, well, an angel spoke. What I'm trying to say is that you can be in a place and God speaks and never hear him. Like some people heard him as though it thundered. Some people heard it in the same place as though an angel spoke. But he heard clearly what God speaks. I want you to know that hearing God is your birthright. Hearing God and hearing him clearly, not in parables, is your birthright. And I pray that going forward you will hear him in Jesus' name. I'm going to stop here and play a song titled Atmosphere by Kaya, Matthew, and Vision Michelle. And I will be back in a moment. Because you're here, even the blind will see. Because you're here, even the dumb will speak. Because you're here, even the dead will rise. Because you're because you're here, because you're here. Because you're here. The blind will see. Even the blind will see. Because you're here. The dumb will see. Even the dumb will speak. Because you're here. The dead will rise. Even the dead will rise. Because you're here. Move 
are listening to Delo Liemi here on All FM 96.9 as well as on KICC, the City of Refuge, Facebook Live on the Inspiration Hour show. I'm talking on the subject of understanding the voice of God. Question is, what is God's voice like? Have you ever thought of it? What is God's voice like when he speaks? You know, John on the Isle of Patmos said this about God. He said this about God in Revelation 1.15. He says his feet were like burnished bronze when it has been made to glow in the furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. Oh, glory to God. He said when he heard God on the Isle of Patmos, the Bible said, this, he had the voice of God. It sounded like the voice of many waters. According to Apostle John, God's voice was like the voice, the sound of many waters. You know, like the coming together of many waters. It's almost like, you know, like when you go to the beach side and you hear the sound of the waves, something like that I'm alluding to I'm in my imagination that that John had it some, somehow like that. Previously, in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel said the same thing that was very similar. In Ezekiel 43, verse 2, it says, And behold, the glory of God of Israel was coming from the way of the east, and his voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. Oh, glory be to God. His voice, the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. You see, God is not limited in the way he speaks. He can speak in any way he wishes to convey his message. He's not limited in the way that he speaks. The psalmist said in Psalm 60, 68 verse 33, it says, to him who rides upon the highest heavens, which are from ancient times, behold, he speaks forth with his voice, a mighty voice. Oh, glory be to God. He says, the voice of God is a mighty voice. You see, because when God speaks, when God speaks, everything comes to attention. Everything must bow in honor reverence and respect because his voice is mighty when he speaks no matter how confused you are when god speaks night turns to day there is clarity and direction when god speaks this is why it's so important my my brothers and sisters that we tune our ear to hear from god that we develop our ear to hear from God. Don't forget that your adversary, the adversary, Satan knows that the, the, the worst he can do to you or do against you is to stop you from hearing from God. You know, when, when he stops you from hearing from God, then you are confused. You don't know where you are going. You don't know what to do. So he will do everything to make sure that you don't hear from God, you know, including trying to make you feel that God doesn't want to speak to you or God doesn't speak at all, etc. The devil is a liar, is the father of liars. The Bible says God speaks, you know, no matter how confused you are, when God speaks, night turns to day. When God speaks, there is clarity. When God speaks, there is direction. When God speaks, there is life, there is strength, there is hope, there is faith. When God speaks, there is power when God speaks. That's why it's so important that you and I must hear God. We must hear God. You know, why you need to hear God's voice? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why you need to hear God's voice. You know, you, go, you can go through anything when you hear his voice. Oh, glory be to God. I, 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 you know, you can go through anything, no matter how negative it is, no matter how challenging it may be, when you hear his voice. Why? Because his voice brings clarity. His voice brings direction. His, his voice brings light and illumination. 
when God speaks, oh, glory be to God. His voice will lead you out of poverty into prosperity, the voice of God. It will take you out of want into abundance, the voice of God. It will take you out of sickness into health, the voice of God. It will take you out of fear into faith, the voice of God. May you hear that voice. May you hear that voice. Ah, may you hear that voice in Jesus' name. If everyone has spoken and God has not spoken, you, you know, it's, it's not quite it. But let me tell you something. No matter what bad news you hear, when God speaks to you and you hear God's voice, life comes. Life comes. Because God's words always bring direction. He will tell you what to do, how to get out of that tight corner. That is why the voice of God is the richest thing you can have. You can't buy it with position. You can't buy it with money. It's impossible. The voice of God. According to the psalmist in Psalm 29 verse 3, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. He said the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Again, See, the voice upon the waters here speaks of the superiority of the voice of God over its creation. The superiority of the voice of God over his creation. In Psalm 29 verse 4, it says, The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Oh, glory to God. When he speaks, everything shakes. The voice of God is tremendously powerful. It's full of glory. It's full of majesty in action. So the voice of God will triumph gloriously over any situation you are in or you are going through. The voice of God, unless he has not spoken. But once he speaks, the enemy tremble. Oh, glory to God. Psalm 29 verse 5 says, The voice of the Lord maketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Cedars are known to be thick, strong trees. When God speaks, not even that, not even the rock can stand in the way of the voice of God. The voice of God, according to the psalmist here, breaks the hardest cedar in the, in, uh, tree in, in Lebanon. No matter how hard, no matter how hard and hardship you are going through, when God speaks, his voice shatters it into pieces. No matter how confused you are, no matter how defeated you are, when God speaks into your situation, there has to be a turnaround when God speaks. You see Psalm 29 verse 6 is, He maketh them to skip like a calf. That's the voice of God. He makes even the mountains, He makes these trees to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. See, the mountain... Siren, for example, will skip like a unicorn <laughs> at the voice of the Lord. That's the psalmist trying to just give us a painting, to give us a picture of how powerful, majestic oh, the voice of God is. When God speaks into your situation, every mountain on your way will skip like the unicorn. They will literally move out of your way when God speaks. You know, when God speaks, he counsels the word of man. No matter how powerful, the most powerful world, man in the world, the most powerful man, women in the world come together. When God speaks, if he speaks according, contrary to what, what they had said before, what God says now is what will stand. Because the word of God is the voice of God, the word of God, the will of God is superior to the voice of God, to the voice of man, rather, the will of man and the purpose of man. The voice of God is superior to all of those. You know, in Psalm 27, 29, verse 7, it says, The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. Oh, glory be to God. See, the mountain, it says, The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire, no matter what you are going through. When God, even this COVID-19 situation, when God speaks in your personal situation, remember when they heard it, in the previous scripture I read, at least there are three classes of people there. Jesus was there when he made that prayer and, and God answered him. We know that there were other two classes of people that had the voice of God. Some said it thundered. Some said he spoke to an angel. So you see, you can be in the midst 
of a crowd and you can be the only one that heard God in that crowd. It's not about numbers. It's about relationship. It's not about numbers. You know, they say it's often said that you can be in a crowd and, and, crowd and still be lonely. It's that kind of thing. It's our connective. It's about connectivity. It's about openness. You see, Psalm 29 verse 8 and 9 says, The voice of the Lord shake the wilderness. And the Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calf. Oh, glory to God. And discover with the forest in his temple that everyone speak of his glory. That is the voice of God. That is the voice of It makes the barren to become fruitful. The voice of God will make you productive, both biologically as well as uh, in your mind. As well as from your mind, the voice of God will make you produce. It will take you from barrenness to fruitfulness. The voice of God. From inactivity to productivity. God, The voice of God will bring you illumination. It will take away confusion from your, from your life. The voice of God. The voice of God. I pray that God will speak to you. I pray that you will hear the voice of God in Jesus' name. I'm going to play a track titled Testimony by Anthony Brown. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. To everyone. Everyone who made it. Yeah. Any test of trial. Hopeless situation. Hopeless situation. Now you have a story. The angels can't sing. The angels can't sing in glory. You're redeemed. You're redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Yeah. Here we go. Whether it's in the court.
Angel DME here on All FM 96.9 on the very inspiration hour as well as on KICC, the City of Refuge Facebook Live. The track you just heard was titled Testimony by Anthony Brown. I'll be bringing the conclusion to this show by uh, which is titled Understanding the Voice of God. I'll be bringing the conclusion to this uh, show by focusing on how to hear and understand the voice of God, how to hear and understand the voice of God. You see, you can't box God. By that, I mean you can't limit God. You can't box God. He can speak to you at any time, anywhere, and anyhow as it pleases. The primary way, though, that God speaks to us or to hear the voice of God is through his word. Uh, the primary way, the primary way to hear and to know the voice of God is through his word. And by that, I mean the Bible. And this is so key. This is so important that we should be grateful. And I'm grateful that we have his word, his written word, uh, because that becomes a reference, a reference, a reference point to whatever we hear being the word of God, something that you can measure against. Absolutely important, particularly in the times that we live in. When the Lord speaks, for example, uh, the Lord Jesus said in John 10, 27, he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. You see, the first way to hear from God is to first become his sheep. By that, I mean to, be God, to, be, to give your life to him, invite him into your life to become what we call born again, to be born again for your spirit man to come alive with God. Absolutely more important. Other people who are not, uh, uh, or other people who are not, who are not born again, whose spirit man is not alive, will hear God. But they will hear God as though it thundered. They will hear God as in parables. You don't want to hear God that way. You want to hear God and understand clearly how and what God is saying to you. And for the only way that can happen is first, you must be born again. Secondly, on you know, John on the Isle of Patmos said in Revelation 1:10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet. You see, the second way to hear from the Lord is to be in the Spirit. In the Spirit. It says, John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. He said he was in the Spirit. A lot of people are just only in the flesh. He says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet. You see, the, sound, the, 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 the second way to hear from the Lord is to be in the spirit, is to be in, to, in the spirit. Absolutely important. You are born of the spirit. The voice of the spirit is yours to hear. It's your birthright. As soon as you are born again, then you have the birthright to be able to hear the voice of the spirit because God is a spirit and those who will worship him will worship him in spirit and truth. A lot of people just want to hear God in their mind. God, God, God does not, you know, God can speak to your mind. Of course, he speaks in your spirit and then your, 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 your spirit communicate whatever it is to your soul or to your mind, etc. But God essentially speaks to our spirit. That's why you got to be born again. Thirdly, Moses asked the question in, in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 33. He asked this question when he brought them to Mount Sinai. In Deuteronomy 4.33, he, 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 said, he said this, Has any people heard the voice of God speaking from the midst of the fire as you have heard it and survived? Hmm. Asking the people that. If you are going through the fire, I want you to know he speaks to you. Going through fire, if you're going, going through fire, it's a metaphor going through us of going through challenging times. God will speak to you. Isn't that comforting? 
that it, everything doesn't have to be right around you before you hear the voice of God. You can be going through the fire. And in the midst of your fire, he will speak to you. That's the kind of God I want to worship. I don't want to serve a God that says, go get yourself in, in order and then come to me. No, I want the kind of God that can put my life in order. That's what he says here, that even in the midst of your fire, your challenges, he will speak to you. And as I said before, when God speaks, it's directional. When God speaks, it brings clarity. When God speaks, it's powerful to change every situation. Number four, Moses also instructed the leaders and elders of his people in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 5, 20, 23. It says, and when you hear the voice from the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. So we see here that even in the midst of darkness, in the midst of darkness, darkness is symbolic or if you like confusion is symbolic of darkness. When you're confused, you don't know where to go. So even in the midst of darkness, your darkness, in the midst of your condition, uh, confusion, God can speak to you still. You can still hear God. So you're going through the fire. It doesn't stop God from speaking to you. It, you're going through a dark time, dark, confused time in your life. You can still hear the voice of God. Why? Because God is a spirit. That's why you got to be born again. That's why you need to be born again. That's why you got to be born again. You see, number five, Elijah had been uh, he had been in the right place where God said him where God said he should go after he fled from from Jezebel. But you see, no matter the darkness around you, when God speaks, light must shine. Light must shine. The Bible says in First Kings nineteen twelve. In 13, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there was a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Amazing, 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 amazing situation. So you have to be in the right place to hear God. And I believe it's a place of faith. It's a place of expectation to hear from God. If you don't expect to hear from him, of course he wouldn't speak to you. You know, so the place, being in the right place, having an expectant heart, having faith, expecting to hear, same, same thing. If, if somebody don't want to hear from you, you're not going to push yourself, make all your, you know, force them to listen to you, to what you have to say. Same thing. You know, so you've got to be in the right place. Elijah had to be in the right place in this Easter for him to hear God, just to show us, to teach us. You know, sometimes you think you can't hear God because you are in a dark place. But no matter how dark the place may be, you will still hear God when he speaks. I want you to know that you can hear God even in the midst of your darkness, darkness of business, darkness of sickness, particularly in situations like, like this in the midst of this pandemic. Darkness, the darkness of sickness. You can be in the darkness of, of loss of finances or even relationship or loved ones. You can still hear the voice of God. You know, the dark place of confusion, the dark place of indecision, the dark place of fear and anxiety, worry and cares of this life, you can still hear the voice of God. And when the voice comes, guess what? Illumination comes, light comes, direction comes. Many times we think we can't hear God because we are not in the right place. You can't hear him if you are not in the right place. If you really want to hear him, he will speak to you. If you really want to hear God, God will speak to you. The reason most people don't hear God is because they have never bothered. They have never positioned themselves. Like Elijah went to the cave because God told him there. He was going to speak to him there. And he was at the right place, at the right time. And he had expectation. He expected to hear from God. 
if you don't want, if you don't train yourself, if you don't discipline yourself, if you have no expectation to hear from him, of course, he will not speak to you. Like I said earlier on in, the, in this service, uh, in this, in, in this uh, uh, show, that your expectation, what you believe, your life gravity towards what you believe. If you believe that he will speak to you, he will speak to you. If you don't believe that you will hear from him, of course you will not hear from him. And what, why is the word of God so central in all of this? The Bible is so central because whatever you hear or whatever you think you hear, it will never contradict the word of God. It, both in timing, in contact, in every, it will never come. That's why the word of God is so uh, is to be cherished. The Bible is to be so cherished because whatever you hear from God, because we, you know, don't don't forget that Satan also wants to put stuff in your mind, thinking to make you think that it was God that spoke. So that's why we must always check whatever we hear with the word of God, for we know precisely whatever it is. God is speaking to us. My time is absolutely gone. So I've got to check out now. Until next time. The last uh, music I'm going to play is Taiti Kukuma or Kukuma by Amanda Malela. I'm sure you'll be blessed at this while going out in the high. May God bless you, increase you, empower you. Until next time, it's Delulu Emi here on LFM 96.9 as well as on KRCC City of Refuge Facebook Live. Have a wonderful time in Jesus' name. This way, oh daddy, oh daddy. What is it that you wanna say, oh shitty, oh shitty? Yeah, God put you my way, and that I know for sure. Just say the word, and I say yes. Just get down on one knee. Just get